overshadowing power. Come and heal your sons and daughters, overshadowing power. Come and heal in your holy temple, overshadowing power. Come and heal your children today, overshadowing power. Come and heal your sons and daughters, overshadowing power. The time has come. The season is here. It is a new day. The double doors and fortified gates are open for the shift. My shift, our shift. It is major. It is swift. It is radical and unparalleled. It is unstoppable and permanent. It is a divine lift. The word of the Lord cannot be broken. Prophecies have come to fulfillment. The time of the Lord's favor is here. It is now, and I receive it now. The King of Glory has stepped in. No giant can withstand. At his word, I step out of the boat of containment and possess my inheritance. The warfare that once stood in my path has ended. It is finished. I step up to a new level. I heed the Lord's call to a higher place, a new vantage point, where I see as he sees. I enter into a deeper place of intimacy to know his heart. I see, I hear, and then I move in faith, taking hold of that for which he took hold of me. The shift has come and I have shifted. I cannot be found where I once was. My arms are filled with the harvest. My joyful song can be heard throughout the land. I ride upon a horse as a prince, I will never walk again. The nation sees and knows that the Lord is with us, and the people's hearts are turned to seek the counsel of the Lord. The righteous rise in authority over the seven mountains of society, and the nation experiences the blessings of the shift. We have shifted, our time has come. We have shifted, we embrace the new. We have shifted, we are standing tall. We have shifted, we will never look back. The shift is now, hallelujah.
want to especially welcome you to this online service. Uh, we welcome you into the presence of the Most High God. Uh, you are in for a blessed time in His presence. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless you, Lord, for an opportunity to be in your presence, to hear from you, to be instructed by you, to receive your word of guidance, of protection, of love, of direction for our lives. We look to you, Lord. That's why, Lord, we are humbled to be gathered in no other name but the name above all names, the name Jesus. We thank you, O oh God, that you will still speak to us and direct us and show us the way in the midst of it all. To you be glory, honor, and praise for every word, every direction, every inspiration that you will bring our way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We bless the name of the Lord because the Lord is faithful. The Lord is faithful to his word. We want to share on the theme building kingdom legacy as we go and flow with the spirit of god under this theme we hope that god will bless our lives as we follow his word let's turn our bibles to genesis chapter 1 verses 26 good and reading then god said let us make man in our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, he created them. Then God said to them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life i have given every green herb for fruit for food and it was so then god saw everything that he made and indeed it was a very good so evening and morning were the sixth day this scripture gives us an understanding that each and every one of us god's creation we have been called to fulfill a purpose on earth. Most times we as believers and many people around ask and always complain that I don't know what my mission in life is, what I am here on earth to do. There are some of us that feel that it is the accumul accumulation of wealth. It is to achieve academic excellence. It is to accumulate wealth. It is to put my children in the best schools and build houses. That is all we are here on earth for. But as somebody said, I think even the situation we face now is a very good example that life is more than the accumulation of wealth. Because even people that have private jets now cannot use them. People that have monies in the banks, you can just stay home and there is little or nothing you can do. So life as God foreordained it is more than the things that we used to think that are the most essential. So God in the beginning in, at creation said that let us make man so that he will have dominion. God has created you and I for dominion. He has created us so that we will be fruitful, so that we will multiply, so that we will subdue the earth, so that we will have total control. Not to be overtaken by events, but to be master of events. So in order for us to understand 
the mandate of building kingdom legacy, we must go back to the beginning and understand that all of us are created for a purpose. And the purpose is to be fruitful. Build, building kingdom legacy means that we must be fruitful. We must have dominion. When we we'll exit this side of eternity and go to meet our maker, there must be something on this earth that people can look at and say, we thank God that he was alive, that she was alive, that the gatekeepers were at the gateway. In order to understand this also, the call to build kingdom legacy, let's look at the types maybe of calls that we have. And I would want to use just two examples from scripture. One is from Genesis chapter 37. Genesis 37 from verse 5 tells us about the man Joseph. And the Bible says that he had a dream. And in the dream, he had two dreams. One of the dreams, he saw sheaves of wheat that shot up. And ten were bowing to one. And the other one was that his father, brothers were bowing to him. Or the, 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 the stars were bowing to the moon. And he, in his youthful exuberance, in his excitement of this revelation from God, he shared the dream with his brothers and his father. And that was the beginning of troubles, of his troubles. And it also is instructive to us that that's why the Bible says that we, mo we cannot cast treasures to swines. There are things that when you share your vision and your dream with people that are, of, or are not on the same wavelength as you, there is a way that they may be your opposition. They may be the thing that will impede you from getting to building your legacy. So you must be careful when you have the call who you share with. Because if you are not on the same wavelength, and you cast your treasure to swines, it may be destroyed. But he shared this dream, and the Bible says his brothers envied him, but, and, but his father kept it in his mind. He pondered on it, which is also instructive to you parents, that when your children share dreams with you, no matter how uh, impossible it may seem, Please don't kill the dream. Don't silence them. Don't shut them up. Pray for them. Keep it in heart. Pray and wait on God for it to come to pass. So we see a call for keep building a kingdom legacy be coming through a dream. In the book of Nehemiah, chapter 1, the Bible says that Nehemiah asked about the children of Israel. The people that were in captivity. And he was told, he was informed that the walls were broken. The protection of the children of God was taken away. Embarrassment and shame was coming in the house of the Lord. And the Bible says upon hearing this, that he went into mourning. His heart was broken. Most times I hear people say that, well, God did not tell me to do this. In the book of Nehemiah, there is nothing that tells us that God spoke to Nehemiah. But upon hearing that the name of the Lord was at stake, Nehemiah jumped at the opportunity repented on behalf of the people of Israel and asked God for grace and favor to rebuild the walls, to build a kingdom legacy. Upon hearing the shouts of Goliath, David took the task at hand that this is my time to build a legacy for my God. And he answered to that call. So we must understand that for us to build kingdom legacy, God does not always have to come into your room. 
He does not have to come through a dream. He doesn't have to necessarily come through a prophecy. Look around you. What are the things that bother you? What are the things that keep you up at night? What are the things that you cannot tolerate? That when you hear about them, something shakes inside of you. That I must do something about this situation. I must do something about my community. I must do something about my nation. I must arise to the task and build a legacy for my God. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. What is it you are seeing around you that is not in line with the purposes of God for humanity? We must understand that God has called each and every one of us. There is no one that is born useless. As we normally say here at the gateway, if heaven deemed it fit to release us, then earth has a need for us. We are upon this earth to build a legacy unto our God. The other thing we must look at from the scriptures is what is the purpose of building kingdom legacy? Why are we here? To build a legacy. And let me also be quick to say that a legacy is not necessarily the physical things that are necessarily seen. It's not necessarily the physical. Because sometimes we are so quick to look at buildings, to look at things. The legacy that God is interested in is the eternity of humanity. How whatever we do translates into the salvation of mankind. So that heaven will rejoice. Heaven, as the Bible records, does not rejoice over physical things. It rejoices over the salvation of souls. So whatever it is that God has called us unto, it is for the salvation of humanity. So when you see men and women going astray, something must rise up into, inside of you to bring out the best of God so that humanity will benefit. God has called us to build a legacy so that his name will be glorified, so that humanity will be saved. In building kingdom legacy, let us also be mindful that there are going to be distractions, derailments, things that will want to take you away from what God has called you unto. If you look at the story of Joseph, from within his household, he had challenges. So as you rise up to the task of building a kingdom legacy, be mindful that there will be betrayals from close quarters and from afar. People that will arise, people that you had, you believed that had your back, they will betray you. Because the Bible says that do not put your trust in the arm of flesh because it will fail. So we look unto God who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Also, apart from betrayal, there are elements of injustice that will be meted out to you as you set your heart to build kingdom legacy. There are elements of injustice, plottings, and schemings of the enemy. Just to derail you, just to get you to be discouraged. Promotions that were supposed to come your way, delayed for no uncertain reason. People that will lie and scheme and plot against you so that you will miss out on God's best. All these things that the devil does, ladies and gentlemen, be aware. It is to get you so discouraged that you give up on God and give up on your call. Joseph could have given up, but in prison, he gave of himself. He allowed his gift to make a room for him and he brought him before the king. In building kingdom legacy, like David, most times you will be relegated at the back. Sometimes 
our agitation to make it in life our agitation to be seen as excelling in life sometimes and most times these things get to us because it is like you have done so much i i want to believe because of what we hear about david i want to believe that even though he was the one taking care of the sheep he would bring the sheep or the goat for food but i'm sure he was not given the best of portions god allows us to go through this as we build kingdom legacy he allows us to be regularly getting to the back the lead, the last born he was not considered when the prophet came to look for a king he was nowhere to be seen he was nowhere to be thought about even by his father so when the prophet said is there no other the father needed to scratch his head to remember that he had a son that was taking care of his wealth that was how bad it was his wealth was in the, with the sheep and the goats but he forgot about the one taking care of it because in his mind David did not exist but God had him in mind and I come to tell you people of God that God has you in mind it does not matter the back of what wilderness you are he has you in mind he is looking in your direction and he is calling you to build a legacy for his kingdom God is interested in raising his people to the point that they will build that which will last for eternity in that apart from david the bible is replete with men and women that faced all kinds of challenges nehemiah was uh, there were men that were planning and plotting and if you look at the story of nehemiah you will even see that sometimes these people called him to legitimate or seemingly legitimate meetings come let's discuss leave what you're doing when god calls you to build kingdom legacy there will be distractions there will be people coming and sometimes they may look well they may mean well but on in the back of it is to just to distract you that's why children of god you must be careful it's not everywhere you are called to minister that you should run to ask god to lead you some places just take away from you some are just distractions in order to build kingdom legacy you must be where god wants you to be like nehemiah you must be focused on the mission at hand that god has called me on this and god has called me into this and this is where i'm going nothing is going to take me away nothing is going to take my faith away nothing is going to shake me i am rooted in god and i am going in this direction with him in order for us to understand what god has called us to we must take into consideration as the bible says be sober be vigilant because your enemy the devil roams about like a roaring lion looking and seeking whom he may devour but be careful be sober be sober in god be sober in the word of god no wonder joshua when god called him he said this book of the law this book of the law must not depart out of your mouth you must meditate upon it children of god if you are going to build kingdom legacy it's not going to be by your power it's not going to be by your might it's going to be by the spirit of god that's why you must meditate upon the word being careful to do according to all that is written therein in such a way that you will make your way prosperous and have good success look at the men and women god used in the bible they were not the perfect examples of maybe men and women we would want necessarily they were weak but god was strong in your weakness his strength is made perfect in building kingdom legacy people of god do not depend on your strength on your wisdom 
You do not come in the enticing words of men's wisdom. You come in the power of the Most High. Not by power. Not by might. Lest you build a legacy and you start hitting your chest. That well done, John. Because God has, is the one that has given you grace to finish, to build. So let's look to him. There is a call, children of God. God calls us and he calls us in varied ways. Because somebody testifies that I was called through a dream. I was called, singled out by prophecy. It doesn't mean that that is your portion. Look to God. Listen to him. Look around you. What are the things that affect you so much that you cannot sleep? What are the things you are compassionate about that will tell you what legacy you will build? And every legacy has a purpose. Remember, there is a call. There is a purpose. And the purpose is to glorify him. The purpose is to point people into worship of him. So that when they ask you, how is it that you are able to do ABC? You will say, it is because of the Lord on my side. It is because of the hand of the Lord. It is because of the grace of God. And they say, show me this God. Then you show them. The one who is... The Almighty. And no one comes to the Father. Except through his son Jesus. And then remember. There will be distractions. Derailments. Things. That will tend to take you off course. Things that will tend. To want to discourage you. Things that want to keep you down. Keep your spirit down. Bring doubt. Can it be possible? Is it really God that said that I will be head of my household? Is it God that really called me? If God called me, then why am I going through this? But all these distractions and derailments are just to help you to hang on to him and to his word. So that he will prove his faithfulness over and over again. There is no one, remember. None of us created to fail. None of us that is useless. Every one of you listening to me out there, you have a purpose for which you are here on earth. And no devil in, upon this earth can take that purpose away from you. That's why our confidence in God in this time must be stronger. Our confidence in him must be unshakable because we know we have a purpose to fulfill. That's why uh, the psalmist was confident enough to say, I will not die, but I will live to declare the works of the Lord. Know that people of God, you cannot die. No matter what virus comes, you cannot die until you finish that which God has called you to do. That's why you cannot fear. No matter what name it comes by. No matter if this one goes and another one comes. Lockdown or no lockdown. You are still God's anointed. You are still God's chosen. You still have a mandate. You still have a purpose to fulfill. The kingdom is waiting. All creation waits in eager expectation. For the manifestation of you and I. Can we bow our heads in prayer? Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the inspiration of your word. Thank you that your word is true. Lord, we bow our hearts to the sovereignty of your will. Knowing, O oh God, that we are called for purpose. We are called to fulfill purpose. We are called to be fruitful. To multiply, to replenish the earth, to subdue it, to have dominion and control that nothing shakes us. And by this authority in the name of Jesus, we come against every force of darkness. We stand against every power of the enemy that wants to frustrate your grace, frustrate your power, frustrate your goodness upon our life. We nullify it in the name of Jesus. We call on the name of Jesus against every force of the enemy in the name of Jesus we release your grace to your children all over the world to as many as are listening and watching 
your grace over their household, your hand of mercy, your hand of protection. Bring your people under your covering, O oh God, that this evil will pass over and we will build a legacy for your name's sake. To you be glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we live not for ourselves. We live to serve you. We live, O oh God, to fulfill the purpose for which you have placed us here. So we are not afraid and we are not moved. To you be glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Well, uh, we will, if you follow uh, online, you will see, um, we'll be taking our offering and you will see the details uh, for, for which, uh, of which you would be asked to pay your offerings. And this, again, as we always say, is for you gatekeepers, members of the Abiding Word Ministries family. And uh, it is strictly for you. But if you are listening and you are not part of the ministries and you want to give, you are free to do so. But this online service is specifically for Gateway, uh, for the gatekeepers. And the account details are there. Give your offerings, give your tithe, and let God bless you. Do not be moved. Do not be shaken. We ask the blessings of God over your offering, over your tithe, over your giving. And may God multiply you in every way as you give for the building and the expansion of his kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Well, we are so grateful to God for this awesome word preaching that we heard. I believe that it's touching you gatekeepers. It's adding strength and conviction to your lives, uh, shifting us into the reality of God's purpose for our lives in this season. We are grateful for everyone that God is using to help us, not just as a church, but also voices of hope for our country, the Gambia. We will pass through this, we will come out of it, and we will come out of it for the better. And so thank you for your offerings. Thank you for your first fruits. Thank you for singing at home. Thank you for joining with us. Uh, please repost this on social media. You can go on our YouTube channel, AWM Gambia. You'll find it there. It will be also on the Abiding Word Facebook page, Abiding Word Gam page. And you can just enjoy it and uh, be blessed by it. Let's bring this service now to a close, wherever you are at home, wherever this finds you, please just show some reverence. Maybe bow your head, put your hands together with your family, and let's pray. Eternal Father, we are grateful for how you have spoken to us this day. We are grateful for receiving our worship. We are grateful for receiving our offerings, our first fruits, our tithes, and special seeds that have been given. We are also grateful, Lord, for your presence because your presence makes the difference in our lives. We are asking that as we consider building legacy for the kingdom, we would operate on what you have taught us, not just the physical things, but even the deeper spiritual things that will bring greater things in the lives of your people. We continue to pray for this nation, that you preserve us. We continue to pray for the health uh, sector in this country, our health personnel, that you really cover them, preserve them. We honor them, we love them, we salute them, and we ask for your grace to envelop them wherever they are. And so as we close now, we say, may the Lord God bless us. May the Lord God keep us. May the Lord God cause his face to shine upon us and be gracious upon us. Eternal Father, lift up your countenance upon us and bless us. Show us peace, shalom, blessing, your shellac, the Baraka blessing life. And Lord, may spirit translate into shift reality as we build legacy, not just for our name, but for eternity, because yours is the kingdom and yours is the power and all the glory goes to you. In the most excellent, matchless, and precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior, Messiah, al who himself. Everybody said, Amen, 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 and Amen. God bless you. We will see you at our next service online. Uh, we trust that when this is all over, we will all gather together and just have the sweet fellowship we have one with another. 
Until then, remember to fulfill righteousness. Keep your hands clean. Wash as many times as you can. Use the hand sanitizers. Use alcohol-based ones. Um, refrain from touching people, your face. Do all that you can, but also give glory to God who is keeping us. God bless us all, and we will see you at our next service. Shalom.